So at one point, I wasn't Ron the waiter. I was Ron the drug dealer. Oh, damn. Listen, this is this is how it Ron, it's, it's really gotten me kicked off a lot of social media no, no, in the last few months. So just talk vague. Everyone no, 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 understands. So my cousin was one of the top photographers in New York City, and his guy, where he would get his herb from, his name is Richie, a Chinese guy. I didn't have a job at the time. I needed a job. So <laughs> my cousin goes, Hey, can you can, can I can stop you help? here for a second? Because that's just too funny. Eddie Edwards, Ron is a poor man's Joe Pesci. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ron. I didn't want you to hear that. But you decided to get out of the murder room. I hear Joe Pesci, the voice, all the time. I didn't want to get out of it. Hold on, let me put it on the but nobody ever told him they thought he was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going back into the darkness. <laughs> That's funny. So you had a, a cousin? Okay, so here's the deal. So I got bored with your story. So <laughs> what, what happened? So I ended up I ended up selling weed. I, I ended up selling weed for three years. Wow. So I would work from like two three PM to eleven PM and if you had an actual shift and eight Yes, hour it was like, dude, it was like <laughs> really so organized. Not, like, I'm not even trying to make I'm a I'm not joke. joking. It was I just so organized. If you were a dealer, you no. just like, really, really, really. No, I really, really, I'll sell for No, you had I, an actual. No, I had a boss. Like, I had. You had a boss. I had, had two eight Chinese hours. bosses. They're American the Chinese. HR department. I've known this. Thing. I've known this guy. <laughs> HR. <laughs> hold, hold your hands up. Have all your digits. Not your accuser, right? No. How'd you get out, man? I got arrested and I was in the tunes for 36 that hours. Was, that was so, so long story short, yeah, right. if one, one day, so I worked five oh, days yeah, a week, yeah, you yeah, get 15 yeah. bucks an hour. Stop, Ron. I'm really good at this. <laughs> you don't jump ahead. So you had an eight hour shift, right? Yes. I hate when people give me really good shit and then they just babble. Babble, babble, babble. I don't think the fun parts are. I'm really good at this. <laughs> All right, you had an eight-hour shift. No, that's that's where it's interesting to me. So walk me through the day. You had eight hours. Like 15-minute breaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, how did your eight hours? Okay, so I would I would meet him in Union Square. <clears throat> okay. And I would I would be at the bodega where there was chair, whatever. Cool. <clears throat> and then he would and then he would say, he would text me and say, I'm around the corner at, in front of this number, and I would go into the car with him. And he would give me a phone, and then he would give me a bag. And, and the bag had, like, 20 canisters, like little, like they call them plastic coffins. The, by the way, all high-end weed, super high-end weed. And those were 50 bucks. And then I had eight plastic bags of Ace that were going for 130 Oh, my God. And he would give me that. Right. In the phone, he'd kick you out of the and car then, and say, "If you got time and, to lean, you got time to clean." And, and then always <laughs> wait. See you at four thirty. And then there'd always be because it's the beginning of the shift. There'd always be three or four orders already. So he may drive you to a few. So and they never reimbursed me for public pr- transportation. Well, so well, I had. Did you keep your receipts, Ron? They, they don't do that. There's no HR department. In, so. I had to, admin. By, right. by the way, I had to accrue all the costs. So if I'm on the east side, I'm literally taking express buses up and down First and Second Avenue. If I'm on the west side, I'm taking the That's subway. how you get a Okay. So, so you I'm literally, the- I'm traveling on express buses. But how are you getting the orders? Okay, so. Through the, I okay, mean, this is a long time ago. So, it, so the phone he, wasn't he as gives, easy. He, he, gives me a, he gives me a phone. And this is literally how it worked. I would get a text and it would give me the address and then I would have to respond by saying, okay. And then I would go, go there. <clears throat> and then as soon as I leave, the protocol was finished. And then he would either give me another address or say, find a place to show in the area. So if I was on the East side on a Monday, oh God, I was on I the West side on a no Tuesday. Idea. So literally I was never the same side two days in a row. Right. Because these guys were really cautious. These, these guys were like Chinese mafia. Like these guys were like serious about it. By the way, the guy, his name was Richie, obviously like Richie Rich. Obviously it's not his name. He was like very, very like a very <laughs> scary Chinese guy. 
And the other guy, Joe. I would assume his name was actually Litchie. Yeah. Yeah. I would Dude, assume, so I would assume the Chinese guy wasn't Dude, named Richie. Yeah. I was so naive I thought his name was Richie because I knew him for years before I ever worked for him. And an and now here now right. here now here's the thing. Every Wednesday, this is the truth. And I have the proof <laughs> I sent it to Opie. Can you stop for a second? Yeah, go ahead. This guy, same guy, says Ron is the never-ending storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> the never-ending story is a very good movie. I'm actually oh, yeah. into this. So you had eight-hour shifts. Yeah. Now, what was your percentage? Oh no, no, no! It doesn't work like that. It's what? literally so it was. It's just fifteen bucks cash under the table. So You're I'm making fifteen dollars an hour. Best drug dealer in the world. And this is 10 years ago. But he kept saying, you're making a lot of money because there's no taxes. <laughs> he said that to me. Oh, you mean I can't file? No, but however, why I would. Why wouldn't he give me a cut? Why wouldn't you get a cut? You would get $15 an hour. You, know you could have worked at McDonald's. Nah, you know who's cheaper than the Jews? The Chinese, dude. Fuck that. He I never got charge? a bonus. I never got No bonus. Nothing. Did they throw a Christmas party? So <laughs> once a week. By the way, here's my bonus. This is the truth. Once a yeah, week. For your own beer. Yeah. Once a week. Once a week, I would able I was able to take one fifty dollar container for me. That was it, dude. They were taking advantage of you for real. You had to work an eight hour shift, and you were making fifteen dollars an hour. Cash all, under the table, but with all that risk, that's under crazy. You really have to hammer that one home, right? I was in shirts. <laughs> Why weren't you just a bartender? Is it on your LinkedIn? You would have made more money as a bartender. Can, can I? Can I tell you something? Like. <laughs> There's a freedom to it. Like you're on your own. You think you're, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You're by yourself. There's no one biting on you. I don't know. So <laughs> every you, you Wednesday, like right now? Right. every Wednesday, I would go to the Colbert report on the West side. I think it was in the fifth. Wait, wait, what? I'm the guy every Wednesday. I'm going to the Colbert report. So allegedly, and I have the proof. So, so let me tell you what happened. Oh, he has the proof. Holy shit! He ain't messing Get it around. So to bring it down here. When I'm a block, when I'm a couple blocks away. How many years ago was this? Last week. Because I'm still trying to get on the uh, Colbert show. Well, no. if you looked at the dates, I think it was about ten years ago. All right. So ten years ago, every Wednesday you were at the Colbert I, show. Every about ten years ago, I have all like I you you have to go through security. You have to wear like the Colbert lamination. I have all that on my wall. I, when a girl comes over, when a girl comes over, I'm like, hey, I, I used to do the Colbert show. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to say I used to do I used to do that show. So I'm just showing like that's some of my. Wait, he's he's got proof today. I got so these are show. laminates from the Colbert show. Right, right. Like you believe me, you can't walk in without a name tag. Ronald, you have to go Ron, through security. Ronald. So yeah. this means you had sex with a girl once? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> so you go there. Okay, so I call. Wait, how many people needed your service? Dude, I'm I'm selling 24 little canisters. They're they're buying $1200 every Wednesday. And you get 15 bucks an hour. <laughs> and no one and no one there were No, but was I get tipped, to, though. No, they tipped me. I But no one there was on to okay. something was weird going on here. So here's how it worked. And I was nervous about it as well. I was like, "Man, am I going to get in trouble here?" Right. So couple blocks away i call him i'm like yo i'm a couple blocks away and then he tells the guy to meet me outside one of the writers mm -hmm. and the writer takes me in and then i have to go through security and with, with pot, and i have with, to show i product on you well they're not looking in the bag probably know the too. reason is they're not Most looking in the bag guys do look in the dude bag. they're not looking in the bag because i'm the, the the head one of the head writers is bringing me in okay and he says this is ron he's a writer like they're literally calling me a writer. They're not like like, hey, this is Ron. One of the did it say it on that picture? <laughs> so then, oh God. then we literally go down like two levels, and while I'm going down two levels, you can see on the monitors there's Stephen Colbert. Like they're shooting <laughs> live. Like he's on stage. That's why they did it because they Stephen can't be around. Right. So. Oh, so joking. they're making sure he's there's far, he's busy far doing removed. something. Okay. It can only happen when he's literally on stage. Okay. So I we literally you go. By the way, I I wouldn't be able to to like exit by myself. It's like a labyrinth. Boom, 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 boom. We down in the basement, and it's just it's all writers. It's all like they all have their cubicles. They're buying a lot of weed. Their favorite was Girl Scout cookie. Girl Scout cookie is delicious. <laughs> It's what a, no, what makes it so delicious? Oh, because you're so so high. 
Oh, really? So I said, this is true. I said to the writer, I'm like, hey, does like, does Steven smoke? Does he know about this? And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. He said to me, he's like, no, he's he's by the book. He's straight laced. I'm like, so Steven does, it's like Steven doesn't smoke. My question was, I said, does Steven smoke? And he's like, no, no, right. no, no, right. no, 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 absolutely not. Um, and the reason I don't sell weed anymore is because I got arrested because they thought I was a heroin kingpin. 